So we come back. So in the previous video, we were discussing about the or how to find out the velocity of the slider tank mechanism. So then we've been discussed about the motion of link velocity uh, to find the motion of a link and then uh, velocities in the both the straight and then uh, parallel lines. So now we're going to discuss about the how to find out the numerical values on the slider crank mechanism. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss about the numericals on the slider crank mechanism. So first we'll see about the is the crank and connecting rod. So it is used as a both the crank and connecting rod for a theoretical steam engine or so uh, the crank and connecting rod for in a theoretical steam engine are 0 0.5 meter and 2 meter long so respectively the engine will be having the crank and connecting rod length is 0 0.5 meter of the crank and 2 meter uh, long respectively the crank makes 180 rpm in the clockwise direction the crank that is a 0.5 meter which is the length which makes an 180 rpm in the clockwise direction when it is turned 45 degree from the inlet uh, inner dead center uh, position or what we call it as an inlet dead center so determine when uh, when it is turned 45 degree from the inner uh, dead center position first we need to find out velocity of the position second one angular velocity of connecting rod velocity of uh, point at e and the connecting rod of 1.5 when the uh, velocity of point e and the connecting rod 1.5 meter from the pin and the velocities of rubbing at the pins on the crankshaft crank and crank uh, crosshead when the diameters of their pins are 50 mm 60 mm and 30 mm respectively position and linear velocity of point g on the connecting rod which has the least velocity relative to the crank so based on this uh, data based on these conditions we need to find out all these five conditions that is velocity angular velocity and velocity of rubbing of a cranks crankshaft and a crosshead and position of linear velocity so all these conditions we need to find out by using this data so first nbo that is nothing but the point bo which is the uh, speed is running at 180 rpm where you can able to see the crank makes it in 180 rpm in the clockwise direction or we will consider omega bo is that is 2 pi n by 60 so 2 into pi by 180 180 by 60 180 is there so we are going to get omega that is angular velocity will be equal to 18.852 radians per second is an angular velocity so since the crank length ob will be equal to 0.5 meter therefore the linear uh, velocity of the b will be respect to oa so that is the given the crank length will be 0 0.5 since from o to b so therefore the linear velocity of b with respect to o or we can able to consider the velocity of b is fixed so since the velocity at the point b o will be equal to v b that is a point v b that we can able to write down or we can able to consider as an angular velocity of b o so that is angular velocity of b o into o b so already angular velocity what we got is 18.852 into o b so o b is the respective length what they are given as 0 0.5 when we going to substitute angular velocity of b o into the length o b so we are going to get as in a 9.426 meters per second. So this will be the value for now. VBR we can able to consider VBO. So by uh, this data, first of all, we need to consider the space diagram. Then we need to draw the velocity diagram. And then only we can able to find out the uh, different velocities of a crankshaft or in a rubbing or in a different pins. So first we need to draw the diagram that is OA with respect to, uh, first we need to drive one axis line. So at a 45 degree when the 45 degree line what the turns so we need to draw a line of we have been constructed a line of 0 0.5 meter then we have been joined to the distance of 2 meter at this point now the length is 2 meter and this point o to b is 0 0.5 meter with an angle of 45 degree so this is the what the circle what we call it the inlet dead position or inlet dead center and this is a point center point o and this is point what we call it as an outlet dead center or outlet dead position this is about the space diagram so where this point uh, point p and this is a point b and this is a point o and these are inlet dead center that is inlet dead position and outlet dead position now we need to draw for the vector diagram so first we need to construct an o to p which is a straight line o to p and next which is having an o to b which is having an a 45 degree line then we have been joined now o b p so now O to P which will be having in a vector VP and this will be the vector BO from B to O or O, or o, or o to B. 
that we what we called as in a vector ob so similarly now next what we need to consider is now we need to draw in a point to measuring at with parallel to o to e and similarly we need to draw a line at uh, parallel line to with respect to vp so now already it is a we have now formed an a triangle that is obp now with the reference to this vector vp so similarly again we going to draw in a line of parallel line which is joining to this p so the p is nothing but distance so it is in a 0.5 meter so again from this 0.5 we need to bisect because of this 2 meter length what is there so with respect to that we going to draw this line and similarly with respect to this line that is vector bo again we going to draw or bisect a line of ve so now this gives be gp so from o to b o to e o to g and o to p now we need to measure with respect to all this and we need to find out the uh, velocity position of the p so first vector vp so we'll going to find out vector uh, that is velocity position of p will be equal to vector o to p so now we need to measure the distance from o to p what is the distance is there it will be there around 8.15 meters per second from the velocity diagram now we, we we find that the velocity of p with respect to b so that will be the uh, vp v that is vector pb will be equal to vector bp so what the bp value is there 6.8 meters per second so same that 6.8 meter will be equal to vector bp so this is now we have been find out at the vector of uh, op what is the value of the vector op and the vector bp so since the length of the connecting rod pb is 2 meter they have given the length of the connecting rod pb is 2 meter so therefore the angular velocity of the connecting rod now we need to find out the angular velocity of the connecting rod that will be mpb that is the angular velocity of the connecting rod will be equal to vector pb by pb so vector pb we got already we got in a 6.82 and the pb value what the connecting rod they have given as 2 so now if we if we want to substitute we want to get as in a 3.4 radians per second that will be the Uh, angular velocity of the connecting rod so now we if we going to find out the vector e so that is if we going to measure the distance from o to e by substituting this we going to get as in 8.5 meters per second so now we know that velocity of the rubbing of a pin at an crankshaft that will be a not ao divided by 2 into m into bo so when you going to substitute ao already we got the vector ao divided by t, uh, 2 into m into bo So already we have the value of B O here. We can able to see V B O by substituting that we are going to get an 0.47 meters per second. And similarly, when you are going to substitute for the velocity of rubbing of the pin of the crank will be 0.47. That is for the B O will be 0.417 meters per second. And velocity of rubbing of any pin of the crank. So again we are going to substituting that is M B O plus M B P. If we are going to substitute that value. so we going to get as in a value of 0.6675 meters per second and velocity of rubbing at a pin of the crank that is dc by 2 into m if i'm going to substitute the vector from point dc divided by 2 into m so we going to get as in a value of 0.051 meters per second so by measuring that all these distances we can able to find out now finally we need to find out the what is the value of the vector bg from vector b to g what is the value by measuring this we going to get as a vector value bg is 5 meters per second and again by measurement we find the linear velocity of point g so we need to find the from measurement we need to find the linear velocity of point g so where you can able to see this point g so linear velocity of point g when you going to measure this so the value is around 8 meters per second so this is how we can able to find out or how we can able to identify the different uh, values by using the given data we can able to see by using this given data first we have been drawn the phase diagram and velocity diagram then we have been substituted and we have been measured the values and finally we have been find out the all the uh, given values in this uh, problem thank you